The doll stood motionless in front of the door, waiting to be invited inside, as the light from Jake's flashlight shined upon its dusty wooden face. It's that damn creepy doll, he yelled, quickly walking back to the table. I really didn't understand how the doll was standing without anybody to hold it up. Most or all ventriloquist dolls require someone to hold it up, but this doll stood on its feet with no problem. Maybe something was holding it up. Someone or something we couldn't see. I believe that the doll was alive somehow. Either that, or someone or something was moving it from place to place without any of us noticing. Joel was up next, so he spun the wheel. His game piece moved five spaces to another gray space. Kenzie spun the wheel and her game piece also moved to a gray space. It was then my turn, so I spun the wheel. We just wanted to get the game over with, so we were getting through it quickly. We barely even talked to each other. I spun an eight, and my game piece moved slowly until it stopped. On a red space. I looked around at everyone. They all looked frightened. Except for Joel, who I guess still had the mentality that this was all just a game. I pulled a red card from the deck and took a deep breath before reading it. Don't be scared. We have just begun. The doors are now locked and there's nowhere to run. Creepy riddles. I don't know why, but the fact that they rhymed was very unsettling to me. We all looked at each other, stuck in fear for what seemed like an eternity. We heard footsteps echoing through the halls. It sounded as if someone was running relentlessly around the building. What the hell is going on? Jake asked looking at me. Everybody was looking at me as if I knew the answer. I had no idea what was going on. The only thing I knew was that we were in deep trouble. Jake suddenly got up and scampered outside the room and down the hall. We all followed him out. I tried to convince him that we couldn't leave until the game was finished. It was frightening to find out that even if we wanted to leave, there was no way we could. The doors were locked and the windows were boarded. We were stuck there with no way out. The only way was to finish the game. While Jake and Joel furiously wandered the building in search for a way out, I was right behind them, trying to get them to understand that we had to finish the game or we would never get out. Things were starting to get out of control. Jake and Joel were arguing and it got to the point where I had to yell at them to shut the hell up. We have to finish the damn game, I explained. That damn game is cursed and there's no way I'm playing it, Jake said. We were finally understanding how serious and real the game was. The melody started echoing through the halls. It was calling out for us. It took me a while to get everybody to understand that if we do not finish the game, we die either way. It was a frightening situation we were in, but finishing the game was the only way out. We all walked back to the room and back to the game. I noticed the doll sitting back in the rocking chair. I don't think anyone else noticed. We took our seats didn't say anything at all as we finally continued the game. One thing about this game is that it can literally drive you to go insane. That was happening to all of us. Since I drew the red card that locked the doors, it was Jake's turn. He spun a wheel and landed on a gray spot. Joel was next and he spun the wheel. His game piece moved up five spaces, landing on black. He drew a black card from the deck and read it. Don't be afraid. But there's someone on the furnace. The only thing I liked about the black card was that they didn't rhyme. We flashed our flashlights at the furnace that sat on the other side of the room. And what we saw will give you nightmares even if you aren't asleep. Her face was insidious, and she was just sitting there on the furnace, tapping it with her fingers. Her eyes were dark. You couldn't see anything inside them but evil. Her skin was pale and rotten. You could actually smell her. There was blood lightly dripping from her mouth, and it seemed as if her jaw was broken because it hung unnaturally low as her neck tilted to an angle that no neck should ever be unless it was broken. She had a rope hanging from her neck, and she wore a white gown. I swear she was looking at me. I couldn't really tell because her eyes were dark, but I know she was looking at me. She still does. Every time I close my eyes, I see her. 
Her dreadful face and vile smell will probably haunt me for the rest of my life. We continued the game, trying to ignore the smell, the tapping on the furnace, and the fact that something sinister was just behind us. Kenzie was next, and she spun the wheel, ending up on a gray space. I was next and also ended up on gray. Jake spun the wheel and we watched restlessly as it stopped on red. We were so worried about what would happen next that we didn't notice the tapping and smell was no longer lingering, and that whatever that thing was, was no longer there. Jake took a red card from the deck. I could tell how scared he was by the emptiness in his eyes and how slow he was moving. We were all scared about what would happen next. She sits in the dark and she feeds on fear. Don't be afraid or she'll appear. Everything was silent. You could have heard the sound of our hearts beating against our chests if you were there. They were beating and begging for the fear to go away no matter how many times I counted to three. The fear was like a never-ending curse upon us. Our flashlights started flickering until they went out completely. The room was black and I was convinced that we were already dead and in hell. We heard the sound of heavy breathing and it most definitely wasn't any of us. It was something more demonic and haunting. We heard the tapping against the furnace and the music started playing from the game and the creepy melody echoed through the room. We felt a pulse, and that pulse was coming from the heart that sat ghastly at the center of the board game. After a minute, everything became silent again, but it was still completely dark. We sat in silence for about 15 seconds before the hopeless screaming of Jake echoed throughout the room and out into the hall. The door slammed shut, and we were stuck helpless in the room listening to the screaming of Jake as it faded out into the halls. Something dragged him away. Joel pounded on the door as he yelled for his brother, but there was nothing else we could do but continue the game. I tried to convince both Joel and Kenzie that Jake was probably fine, even though I knew very well that he wasn't. I just wanted to finish the game. We sat back down, saddened by the empty seat at the table. I didn't know if anyone else was seeing what I was seeing, because they said nothing about it, but I saw that thing again. That woman, sitting on the furnace, tapping away. I ignored her and we continued the game, still traumatized by what had just happened. To make matters worse, Jake's game piece, his tombstone moved suddenly to the bottom right of the board where the other tombstones resided. He was officially out of the game. Joel was next. He spun the wheel and barely missed the red by one space. Kenzie spun and her tombstone stopped on gray. I spun the wheel and my tombstone moved six spaces to black. Black cards no longer scared me. Compared to the haunting red ones, they were harmless. I took a card from the deck and read it my voice becoming frail. She's watching you. I flashed my flashlight around the room, not really sure what I was going to see. I saw the doll sitting against the wall of the bedroom door. She was looking right at me. Her evil stare pierced into my mind as a memory. I ignored her, turning back to the game and we continued. Joel was next. He spun the wheel and landed on six. We watched as his tombstone stopped at a red space. He took his time before drawing a red card from the deck. They're calling from the graveyard gates. You've disturbed the dead. Lock the doors and stay away. There's something you will dread. We looked around at each other, confused and worried. We heard the footsteps and the moaning echoing from the halls. The smell of their rotten skin could be smelled from miles away. They were coming towards us, their footsteps and moaning getting louder as they got closer. The door was opening when Joel and I slammed it shut, just before they were coming in. We moved the refrigerator over to the door to keep them from breaking through and it worked out well. They were moaning, growling and hungry for flesh. There had to be at least ten of them. I wasn't exactly sure what they were, but they were clearly something possessed and something dead. After a while, 
The moaning and pounding at the door had stopped, and I guess whatever those things were, they were just entering the graveyard and laying back into their dreadful graves. Kenzie spun the wheel after everything calmed down, and we were finally able to breathe. Her piece moved to a gray space. I spun the wheel afterwards, meeting a gray space as well. Joel was next, and he spun the wheel, just missing red by one space. Kenzie spun the wheel, and her tombstone moved eight spaces and stopped just in front of Joel's. She landed on red. We looked at each other, the dead silence adding to the suspense as she took a red card from the deck. She read it slowly. Her hands were noticeably shaking as she held the card in her hand. She waits behind the bedroom door. Under the sheets, she walks the floor. What the hell is that supposed to mean? Joel asked as if anyone actually knew the answer. The bedroom door creaked open, shining my flashlight. I saw a hand reach out of the door and it made a gesture that was basically saying, Come here. What happened next? I didn't really understand. It was as if Kenzie was possessed or something, because she got out of her chair and slowly walked over toward the door. I saw the emptiness in her eyes. It was like she had no soul. She was like a walking corpse. What the hell are you doing, Kenzie? Joel asked, worriedly. Get the hell back here, Mackenzie! He stood from his chair and tried to stop her, but it was too late. She was pulled inside and the door slammed shut. It was silent, other than the sound of Joel pounding on the door. We couldn't hear a sound coming from the room. We managed to get the door open a few minutes later. We were hearing a creaking sound, and that sound was coming from a rope that was wrapped around Kenzie's neck and hung from the ceiling. She rocked slowly, back and forth, and her jaw hung low in an unnatural position as if it was broken. Joel pulled her down and tried to revive her, but there was nothing. Not even a trained doctor could do. She was dead. He was oblivious to the breathing sound that echoed through the room. There was something in there with us. Something sinister. The room wasn't completely dark. We were able to see without our flashlights due to the moon that shined vividly outside the window that wasn't boarded. We couldn't see anyone, but we heard it breathing. The smell was unbearable, and it wasn't coming from Kenzie's corpse. It was coming from the thing that suddenly walked out of the closet and sat at the side of the bed. Joel and I just stood there in fear as she turned her head towards us our minds traumatized by her deadly dark eyes. She was tapping against the nightstand next to the bed, and she had some dusty sheets that were once white wrapped around her shoulders. I realized it was the same woman, or thing, that sat on the furnace. She just stared at us. The room was silent in the most horrifying way. The only thing we could hear was her heavy breathing. She she whispered, her finger pressed to her lips. I love this song. The music from the game was playing. She got off the bed and she danced around the room. The terrible smell followed behind her. Her voice was probably the most creepy part of it all. It was her creepy tone and the way that it echoed. I turned over to Joel, trying to understand why we hadn't left the room yet. Let's get the hell out of here, Joel. I said. He stood up off the floor and looked at me. My brother's out there somewhere, he said, wiping the tears from his eyes. I have to find him. He seemed unfazed by the creepy dancing woman in the room. He scampered out of the room and I helped him move the refrigerator from the door before we walked out into the hall. Jake! His screaming echoed through the halls, probably waking anything that lived within. We searched through some of the rooms for about 20 minutes before that creepy melody from the game started playing again. I knew it was just a matter of time. He thought it was a good idea that we split up, and that's what we did. He searched the fourth floor while I searched the third. I was searching through a room when my flashlight started flickering before it turned off. I heard footsteps. At first believing they were mine until I stood still, and the footsteps continued. It was dark. The windows were boarded, blocking out any light from outside. Somebody else was in there with me, 
and I know it wasn't Joel, because I heard his calls for his brother echoing through the hall. The door slammed shut. I felt a cool breeze run through me. Jake? I whispered. You in here? Everything was silent. The only thing I heard was Joel yelling. Then I heard a voice, but it wasn't very clear. He's dead. It was a deep, dark, and sinister tone. I couldn't see anything or anybody, but I felt them. I felt their presence. I was lightly tapping my flashlight, trying to get it to work. I closed my eyes and I started counting to three. I was lightly shaking, and every part of me, it seemed, had a pulse. One, two, deep breath, three. The flashlight finally turned on and it flashed directly at some old, dusty mirror. I saw her standing behind me. I felt her cold breath as it dissolved into my skin. I ran out of the room, literally as fast as I could. I was surprised my heart didn't jump out of my chest because it sure did feel like it would. I walked back down the first floor to the game. When I stepped into the room, I noticed someone was standing over by the windows. It was Joel. He was just standing there, in a fixed position, completely immobile. Joel? I walked towards him, slowly. You okay, man? He turned slowly. His face was so pale and he had bags under his eyes as if he hadn't slept in days. I wondered if I looked like that. Did you find anything? He asked, finally dropping back to earth. I thought about the devilish woman I saw. No. Sorry. He sat back down at the table. I had a feeling that he didn't care what happened next, like he didn't care to die. He didn't seem scared or worried, he was just… I don't know. Two seats were now empty as we continued the game. Kenzie's tombstone, I noticed, was moved to the bottom right of the board, right next to Jake's. I spun the wheel and landed on two. That kept me on grey. Joel spun the wheel and was forced to draw a black card. He took a card from the deck and read it. She's watching you. He wiped the tears from his eyes with his shirt and looked over at the bedroom where Kenzie's body still laid. It's her, he said, crying. It's Mackenzie. I turned around, but I didn't see her. Either he was losing his mind or she was actually there. I wouldn't be surprised if she was. I spun the wheel and landed on the same space as Joel. That meant I had to draw a black card. I took a card from the deck and read it. There's somebody at the door. A loud knock echoed through the room as Joel and I froze in fear. Joel and I stayed put as the knocking continued until the door suddenly creaked open. We heard the footsteps, but we didn't see anybody. Joel spun the wheel, desperate to end the game. He was safe from the black and red cards as his tombstone stopped on grey. I spun the wheel, also safe from the cards. As Joel spun the wheel next, I saw Jake. He was sitting on the furnace, tapping away. His jaw hung low as if it was broken. His eyes were dark, but I knew that he was looking at me. Joel had his back turned so he couldn't see him, and I guess he couldn't hear the tapping. He was completely oblivious to Jake's presence. I pretended like I didn't see anything and eventually the tapping had stopped and he disappeared. Joel and I continued to land on Grey until eventually, Joel was forced to draw a red card. This is it, isn't it? He said to me, his voice becoming weak. I didn't say anything. I wasn't really sure what to say. He took a deep breath and read the card. Under the floor you must peek. There's someone there beneath your feet. I remembered the hole in the floor when I first found the game. I showed Joel to the door and he lifted it up. We flashed our flashlights inside to see what was under. What we saw can never unfortunately be unseen. Joel immediately looked away and distraught when he saw what was down there. It was Jake. His corpse was already being infested with flies and maggots as it laid down there against the wall. 
There was no blood, but it was clear that his neck was snapped and his jaw was broken because they were each in unnatural positions. Joel just stood there, his back turned from the ditch. He wasn't crying or showing any kind of emotion. He just looked empty and exhausted. I sensed that something was going to happen, and it did. Something down there grabbed Joel by his ankle and tried to pull him down. I tried to help him, but there was nothing I could do. The game wanted him and they got him. They pulled him under and the door slammed shut. I was all alone. The melody started playing from the game and I walked over to it, not knowing what to do next. My game piece started moving to the center of the board and it stopped directly at the heart. The heart started beating. It had a pulse. The music got louder and louder. It was piercing through my head until suddenly it stopped. My game piece moved all the way back to the beginning where I first started. That was it. The game was over. I left the building without ever looking back. I didn't want to walk back to my dorm room where I would be alone. So I walked to the grocery store that was just a couple minutes away and I cried to everyone there that my friends were all dead. I know they all thought I was crazy, but they called the police and the bodies of my friends were found later that night. I told them the story. I told them everything that happened, but they never believed me. The game was never found, but I know it was somewhere in that building, somewhere either within the walls or under the floors, haunted by the demons within. I can hear the melody playing right now as I sit alone in my room, surrounded by white walls and cameras. They're watching me. I can hear them. I can feel them. And I can see them. That game is somewhere in this world, and I pity the poor soul who finds it. I learn to live with the haunting melody that echoes wherever I go. I sometimes put on my dancing slippers, and I dance to the melody. I dance around, and around, and around. I dance to the sound of fear, because it's the only sound I hear.